This is Harsh Rules. I'm Ben Harsh, and today is the big one. Let's learn to play broadsides and boarding parties. This is the king of Ameritrash Gaming, and we've got three whole pages of components to go over. We've got dice, we've got cards, we've got plastic units, and we've got two giant ships with mass. Lots and lots of very fragile mass. And two giant plastic hulled ships. Why? Because America can. So get your bits together. All of them. Because it's time to set up the game. Step one, you're going to place the game board. Step two, you're going to place the small ships on the starting markers. Step three, you're going to split out the cards. One set for the Seahawk and one set for the Royal Isabella. Step four, you're going to collect dice and damage markers and put them on the table. And step five, here we go. You're going to assemble the hull and the deck. And you got to do these next few steps for each ship. Step six, you're going to get the mass support posts and put them in in this order. There's like a little number on each one. If you put them in this order, it'll work out. If not, you'll have problems. And here's where the problems begin with all these mass. So I've laid it out here so you can see how they're set up. Um, but if you get the post right, it won't be that much of a problem. Step eight, you're going to place 10 cannons on the ship where I've indicated. Step nine, you're going to place 20 crew. So one on each side of the cannons you just placed. Step 10, you're going to place the captain and two of the remaining crew anywhere you like on the ship. All right, let's look at the broadsides play sequence. Broadsides and boarding parties has a very simple move mechanic using cards. Each turn you're going to play three of these cards which allows you to take four actions. The first is simple, move forward. You can also play a turn port card which allows you to turn left 45 degrees or a turn starboard card that allows you to turn right 45 degrees. Finally you can play a no movement card where you just sit in place. You basically string three of these cards together every turn to navigate around the board. And this is how you do it. Each turn you're going to secretly plot a course with three cards face down. Simultaneously you're going to flip your cards over to reveal your course. Then you're going to follow the order of your cards you've played to navigate around the board. Not that this has ever happened to me or anything, but you want to avoid steering into islands. If you accidentally plot your way into an island, you lose all your moves for that turn. Keep your ship on the last dot before you plot it into the island, so next turn you start from here. Keep in mind as you navigate around the board that when you're one dot away from the other player you can open fire and you can do that at any time during this card play sequence. Next we're going to walk through a quick guide as to when you get that close and you want to open fire which cannons can fire. It all depends on the position of the ships and where the lines on the various parts of your ship intercept with the other ship. Since the cannons are placed on the sides of the ship if the enemy vessel is in front of you or directly behind you, you cannot hit them. Now let's look at the ways you can hit them. If your A-line intercepts with the other ship, then you can fire your forward cannon. So that's either the two on the one side or two on the other, depending on the location of the enemy vessel. If your B-line intercepts another ship, then you can fire a broadside, which means you get to fire with all five cannons. If your sea line intercepts with the other ship, then you can fire your aft cannons, so the back two cannons can fire. Once you've fired your cannons, it's time to roll a dice for each cannon to see if you hit or not. Before you fire each cannon and roll the dice, you're going to call out which deck section you're targeting, whether it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, or H. Next, you roll the dice to see where your shot lands. A 1 falls short and misses, a 2 strikes the hull, a 3 strikes the port side, a 4 hits the middle or the mast section, and a 5 hits the starboard side. If you roll a 6, it overshoots and misses. Let's look at damage. Wherever a shot hits, 
It destroys all cannons and crew in that deck section. If the captain is having a particularly unlucky day and a shot lands in his section and then he is hit as well. Remove the captain unit and the ship cannot move for one turn because the crew is all confused, but you still can fire your cannons. After that, select one crew member and replace him with a captain. That crew member is just assumed command of the vessel. A quick note, if all the crew, cannons, and captain are removed, the game is over. Okay, what if the shot lands in the middle or the mass section? Well, if it lands on a deck section with the mast, then you're going to remove that piece of mast. The main mast takes two hits to remove, but everything else takes just one. Every time you remove a mast, you place a damage mast or hull card on one of your plotting spaces. This gives you one less action per turn. If three masts are destroyed and you place cards over all your plotting areas, then the ship is dead in the water and cannot move. Hull damage works in a similar fashion. When a shot is fired and a 2 is rolled, the ship takes hull damage. The player with a damaged ship will put a damage marker on the deck section next to where the hull was hit. If that same section of hull is hit again, then you place a damage mast and or hull card in the plotting area. Just like when you lose a mast, this reduces the number of actions you can take during the plotting phase. If you receive three of these cards and all your plotting sections are covered, then the ship sinks and it's game over. Now let's look at the boarding party's play sequence. The boarding party's phase of the game occurs when two ships collide with each other. Collisions occur when two ships occupy the same dot during the plotting phase. The first ship on the dot is considered stationary and the second ship's collision angle determines the final position of both ships during the boarding party's phase. I've provided this graphic so you can see depending on which angle the second ship collides where it ends up for the boarding party's phase. For the purposes of this tutorial, let's say the ships end up side by side like this. Now that the ships are locked together for the final battle, let's talk deck movement. Each player gets three actions per turn that they can move either three units or one unit three times or any combination of which as long as it's three actions. Units can move in any direction unless they're crossing over to the other ship. In that case, they cannot move diagonally. There are also upper and lower decks on each ship, and the only way to navigate up or down to those is via the ladders, which I've highlighted here on the screen. When two opposing units move into the same deck section, then hand-to-hand -hand combat occurs. The first step to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat is to determine the advantage. For each additional unit above the enemy's number, you get a plus one to your dice roll. If the captain is involved in the battle, you also get a plus one. Just remember, if the captain dies, the game is over. Each side is going to roll one six-sided dice and add any advantage. So in this situation, the white player rolled one and adds one because of an advantage and gets a two. The black rolls a three. Since the black player outrolled the white player, he gets to remove one of the white units from play. Now that one of the sides has lost a unit, you're going to recalculate the advantage. And since there's only one on one, there is no advantage now. Roll one dice for each side again, and it's a tie. So in this case, both crew members are mortally wounded and die. So nobody wins this particular battle. A quick note to the rules. If you're sword fighting with two captains and both captains tie, then you roll again because you're deciding who's going to win the game. A quick review of how you win the game. For a broadsides victory, you destroy three enemy masts, or you sink the enemy ship by hitting three hull sections twice, or a combination of above. Also, you can destroy all cannons, crew, and captain, and you can win that way as well. A boarding party's victory is decided when one of the captains falls in hand-to-hand -hand combat. And that, my friends, is how to play broadsides and boarding parties. 
And now for some final thoughts from your eccentric host. Broadsides and Boarding Parties is one of the first titles in the Milton Bradley Game Master series, and it's the only one that's never been reprinted, obviously because of all the components it has. Plus, as you can see, it's a very simple game for all the shock and awe value of the plastic ships. Broadsides and Boarding Parties is the quintessential Ameritrash game. You can't help but grin like a little kid when you set it up, and it does turn a lot of heads when you have it on the table. I'm thrilled I finally got a copy of this game to add to my collection. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I'm Ben Harsh for Harsh Rules, and I'll see you